Hey everyone, it's Brick Waffle here, and today we're going to do a getting started with Imperion Galactic Survival. Now, this video is going to come out a little bit before we're going to start a Let's Play series with the block farmers on my server, but I wanted to give you guys who have not seen the game before a little bit of an idea of what it's going to look like. And if you're new to the game, this is also going to help you get started, uh, learn some of the basic controls, learn some of the things that might not be intuitive if you're coming to this from other survival games. Uh, but once you get the hang of it, there's a lot of really cool stuff in Imperion. I'm very excited about it, and the scale of this game is absolutely incredible. Most survival games, you start out, you know, kind of abandoned somewhere, shipwreck, crashed escape pod, something, and you have a little bit of an area to work with. Imperion, that just keeps zooming out. You know, you start out on a small area, you can go the whole planet, then the moon, and the asteroid belt, and other planets, capital vessels, all sorts of things, and you can build it all from scratch. The terrain is deformable, which is another nice touch for survival games, and it's just, it's incredible. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to do is click New Game, and then you're going to have to pick a few things here. So first thing you can do is give your game a name, and this doesn't really matter, this is just gonna help to determine where the save folder is. So we're gonna call this Getting Started, and we're gonna set that, and then you can pick Game Mode, Survival, or Creative. In Creative, this is a great way to get started and try to learn how to build things, but if you wanna learn how to play the game, how to actually do it, rather than just how to build a cool looking base, you're gonna to wanna to keep Survival. Seed is a randomly generated number, and you can just click this a few times and pick any number you want, up to seven digits, and then you have to pick your starting location. Aqua or Omicron. Now, Aqua is where I would recommend most new players start, mostly because it has oxygen. If you pick Omicron, you will not have any oxygen, so you will have to make it from water and you will run out and you will you know, suffocate if you don't do that right. So that's something for advanced players. Let's go ahead and start on Aqua. Now, difficulty preset you can see over here. This is the custom preset I've been playing around with a little bit. Escape pod content easy means you start with a bunch of stuff right off the bat to get you going. Now, if you have it on medium or hard, you're gonna start with less stuff in your escape pod. Player progression is the speed of your experience gain and basically how quickly you move through the content. Um, the nice thing about that is when you have fast player progression on, you unlock new patterns and get different kinds of vehicles and base templates unlocked. For me, I'm not as concerned with slowing down the rate to, to the top level. Whatever that is, I actually don't know at this point. I'm more concerned being able to build the cool stuff. So I wanna get through those unlocks as quickly as I can. Amount of ore per deposit, rich, and number of deposits plenty means you're gonna have loads of resources. Overall drone presence low, and drone base attack. You can do this, I'm gonna set it to easy for this one so we can see some drone base attacks. Rate of NPC spawn normal and enemy difficulty medium, we're just gonna keep that at the default, and we're gonna make the craft, um, crafter, constructor craft speed and blueprint production speed fast as well. Um, I just don't like waiting around for progress bars. So once we've set all that, you can go ahead and click start, and we'll la launch into a new game. All right, so once we come in here, you can see we've already reached level two, but let's go ahead and hit M real quick while we're coming in. You can see what this world looks like, and you can aim for wherever you want to aim. You can actually steer this a little bit, so you can push forward, you know, up and down, left and right. You can kind of see where you want to steer it to, so if you see something like that or iron deposit you want, that's good. What I would recommend, though, is you, you end up somewhere near the water because you're going to need to place a few things early on that require some water, but I wouldn't go for those islands just yet because while you might be safer from predators, you're gonna have a little bit of a hard time getting to any kind of resources. So let's crash down on this beach. I think this is gonna look nice for our starting home. And you can kind of steer with the mouse a little bit too. And once we crash, we're not, we're not gonna to wanna to crash right in the water because we have to get the stuff out of our escape pod. So I'm actually gonna crash a little over here and hopefully we won't roll towards the water. There we go. We crash, there's a lovely crashing sound, some heartbeats, and then we get out of our escape pod. So first thing you wanna do is come up to this and hit F and take all right here from this button and take everything out of your escape pod. Now you can see how much stuff we start with on easy escape pod content. That's gonna be absolutely critical for us. And the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do right away, a couple of things, one is hit tab, this is your inventory, and you can take your helmet off here. You don't need to wear your helmet on Aqua because you already have oxygen, it's a breathable atmosphere. But then you wanna equip a few things. Now, in a lot, of, a lot of people's first instinct is to click and drag, that doesn't work. You actually click and then click again. So let's go ahead and put our pistol, our drill, our chainsaw, and our filler and flatten tool up here. Let's go ahead and put our flashlight at the bottom of that. Now, in order to use these items, it's pretty straightforward. You just select them with your keys, or you can use your mouse wheel. And you can see these all start with a full charge as well, so that's pretty awesome. The other thing to note is you do have a mission menu on the right-hand side there. It says, right now, we want to place our survival constructor. And you're going to get some missions now as of the uh, one of the more recent updates where you can start to get help with the game as you go through. But before we do any of that, let me just walk around a little bit and show you a couple of other options. One of the important things you want to know is that some mobs are aggressive, like this slime. He will be aggressive if we get close enough to him. 
and some mobs are not. I don't see any over here that are not aggressive, but you'll see herbivores and that sort of thing that aren't going to mess with you as well. So you can be careful, and most things are much more dangerous at night. You will see velociraptors out here. Um, during the day, they're not aggressive. At night, they are. But if you do get into trouble, you can always just shoot them. You just shoot this guy. There we go, and now he's dead. You press R to reload, and you can hit F to access the slime and take the stuff from there. So you got a little bit of alien parts, some alien teeth, and some raw meat. And we'll talk about what to do with raw meat in just a minute. Some other important basics. If you look down in the bottom left corner, you can see your health, food, oxygen, and stamina. You can also see how fast you're going. That's not as helpful when you're running around, but it can be really helpful when you're, you know, using a vehicle. Um, jetpack. So if you hit J, you'll toggle on your jetpack mode, and then when you jump, you'll actually jetpack. And it'll drop back down when you run a jetpack stamina there. You do have unlimited fuel for it, but you can see here, you get the little jetpack thing, you can fly around. It's really helpful to reach some difficult places. And by the way, toggling your view is the V key. But it's also really helpful if you're in combat. So if I was fighting that slime and he was getting too close to me, I could just jetpack up and away from him, and I go pretty quickly backwards, much faster than I would just walking backwards. So it's a really good way to keep yourself alive if you're getting attacked by stuff, especially if it doesn't have a ranged attack, which is most of the things on the planet. Uh, gravity you can't toggle, and there's a shortcut key for your helmet, that's the U key. You'll see you get a little bit of that vignette around the outside edge of the screen. That tells you whether your helmet's on or not, and that's going to be really important for you if you're going underwater. As soon as you start to step in the water, you're going to start to lose your oxygen, and it'll tell you, hey, no oxygen wearing your helmet may help. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to use all my oxygen up, but you will need to go underwater to get things like seaweed and crystals and things at some point eventually. The other important thing is just like when we were crash landing, we can hit M at any point we want and see the map. You can left mouse drag around to kind of spin that around a little bit. And as you explore things and uncover them, you'll get little markers here. So we, all these things we flew over in our escape pod, cobalt deposit, iron deposit, iron deposit, you can see those and you can see how much ore is left on those. You can get some statistics about the planet down here. You can see how many resource nodes are on the planet and how many you've found. So I've found two of the 12 iron nodes on this planet and one of the 10 cobalt nodes. So when you're coming to a new planet in particular, this will tell you what resources are here and if it's worth exploring. You can see some other statistics here. You can click and see all sorts of things like what else is in the, the galaxy you've generated. So you can see the different planets that are here, the asteroid fields, all sorts of things like that. You can also see a view of your galaxy. So here's Omicron and Omicron Moon, Aqua and Aqua Moon. So you can see what's out there. Uh, Ningways, that's a snow, it's a PvP area. You can see these are PvE. And when you get to the PvP ones, those are PvP areas where you can fight other players if you want to. If you're playing on single player, that doesn't matter. You can also see things like trading outposts, asteroid fields, and alien outposts, and that's going to be something you're going to deal with much later in the game. And eventually you're going to be able to generate more than one galaxy, which is pretty cool. All right, so a few things about using your inventory. Um, when you have something that you want to equip and use, let's go ahead and use um, an O2 bottle, which is kind of silly, but let's let's go ahead and put our helmet on for a few minutes and run our O2 down a little bit. Obviously, you can select things and click on them to use it, so we can select this drill, and then we can start drilling holes in the ground wherever we want just by pointing at the ground and drilling. And you'll see it knocks out a big chunk of that ground right away. If you, dig, if you dig straight down, it's going to be hard to get back out unless you can jetpack up. Um, most of the time, if you're going for resources, you're going to want to go kind of at an angle so you can get down to them and walk back out. With a chainsaw, it does exactly what you think it does. It takes down trees. You just kind of walk up to one and start using the chainsaw. And after a few seconds of using it, you'll get some wood. There you go. And sometimes the wood doesn't appear right next to you. Sometimes it does. And the filler and flatten tool. Let's go back to our little hole over here. With this thing, if we left click, we're going to fill up an area, and if we right click, it's going to flatten an area out to the level we're standing at. So I can point down, it's not going to, it's going to go down a little bit, but this is mostly meant to flatten out the surrounding area to where you're standing. So if you're trying to dig out a big area to put in, you know, some piece of your base or build a vehicle, you can do that. All right, so now that we've used a little bit of oxygen up, you can see normally in a lot of games, you would just click the five button here and you'd start using it. In Imperion, you actually have to select it and then left click and you can hear oxygen is refilling. So that's a little bit of a, a change if you're coming from something like Minecraft or Ark or one of the other popular survival games, that's gonna be a little different for you. But you can do that with any of your rations here. Some other important things to note are if you're clicking items between your inventories, um, you can shift click to move the whole stack and then shift click back and it'll move an entire stack of things. Otherwise you can do right click and it'll take half a stack. So that's just like Minecraft, which is kind of nice. Two other important things that are easy to overlook down here are the trash and drop. So if I have something I don't want to keep, I can drop it. It'll drop out in the world. You can hit F to pick it back up. Or if I did the same thing and put it in the trash spot, it would be gone forever. 
Let's go ahead and take our helmet back off too. These filters at the top show you all the objects that are for bases, capital vessels, small vessels, and hover vessels. So there's these color-coded keys. Now, you can see this core right here has all four colors, which means this is used in everything. It's used in bases, capital vehicles, small vessels, and hover vessels. But for example, the growing plot only has bases and capital vessels. You can't put growing plots on the smaller ships. Same thing with all these other crops. So you can quickly tell at a glance which things are used in what kind of uh, construction. And that's going to be really important later on because you might have things like lights, and there might be two or three versions of light, and they're used in different kinds of construction. It's very helpful to know right off the bat. The other thing that's useful to know is your tech trees. So you can see we're already level three, and if we click our tech tree here, you can see our level, you can see our available unlock points, and then you can see, if you click on something, how many points it costs to unlock. So for example, in Capital Vessel, you start with a few things, fuel tank, small O2 tank, clone chamber, small generator, and light. Um, but you can also click on all these other tabs, and especially in the very early game, you're gonna wanna think about weapons, you're gonna wanna think about tools, and probably bases. And you do start with a good selection of stuff. A lot of this stuff is gated by level, so you can't get to anything in this column until you're level three, nothing in this column until you're level five, and so on, all the way up to level 12. I think it's 15 for a few things. But for right now, at level 20 for, for the laser rifle. Uh, for right now, I'm not going to spend any of those points yet, but yes, you are going to want an assault rifle as soon as you can. Um, but you're not going to need that right off the bat. The pistol is going to be fine for your first few minutes. All right, the next thing you want to look at is the factions tab. Now, if this is single player, it doesn't really matter. You can keep everything as it is. But if you're on a server, this is a little bit unusual. A lot of games have some kind of guilds, clans, factions, tribes, whatever it is. You can create those here, no problem at all. So let's just do block farmers. And then you have to set an abbreviation. Let's just do BLF. Now you can see that I'm the owner, and here's all the members. And there's you're going to be multiple factions on a server. What's interesting is if I want somebody else to join the block farmers now, I can't invite them. They have to go into the factions menu, and they have to apply to join the block farmers. Once they've done that, I can see it, and anybody that's an admin can approve that. They can accept it, and they can promote or demote. And that's really helpful, because if somebody's offline, they can apply to join the faction, and then later on when you get online, you can just accept it. So you don't actually have to wait for everybody to be online at the same time. It's a little bit weird that you apply instead of being invited, but it actually makes sense that you can do it because you don't have to be online in order to have that happen. Okay, the PDA. The PDA is very, very helpful. This shows you all sorts of things. Like here, we can see check your starting equipment. We've completed all those steps. You'll see those over here on the right-hand side as well, but this gives you specific details about everything that you need to know. Um, you can see aim at the escape pod and press F. Any device can be accessed by hitting F. To change the keys, go to options and controls. This tells you lots of details about all this stuff. It goes over some of the things that we have, that we've just talked about in this video, but a lot of people overlook that detail. And for the next one, place survival constructor, you can see we can skip this. If we've already placed a survival constructor, for example, we can skip this and get credit for it and go to the next thing. That's really, really nice because anything with a star like that, you can go ahead and say, well, I don't need to do that. I'm just gonna manually complete it. So let's go ahead and do that now. It'll say, make sure you at least read the actions description. It can contain useful hints. And they're, they're absolutely correct. This talks about how to place build blocks, what this can do, some tips for using it, and all sorts of stuff like you can pick these up again after placing it. So if you want to, to skip things, you can for a lot of these. And a lot of them you can't skip until you get there. So if we place, place survival constructor and say yes, then we go to basic crafting. Now you can skip these. You can't skip them until it's the next step. But this is really nice if you're going off and you're building your base and you're having a good time. You forgot that there might be a quest for that. You don't have to go do another base just to get credit for it. You can check these off. You can also see single player missions. There's all sorts of things over here that you can do. Different kinds of things you can look up. Like um, you can actually get coins here. You can get emergency rations, all sorts of things like that. I have no idea what the gold coins do. I haven't really been doing anything with that yet. And then FAQ, this is just the FAQ. So this is going to be all sorts of stuff about like, you know, building tips, building materials, block shapes, rotating, block lines and planes, moving wireframes, removing dirt, all sorts of stuff to go in here. So you can see all of these things as well. It's really very, very helpful for you. So let's go ahead and place our survival generator since we skipped that quest. I'm going to put it on any slot in my hotbar, and I'm just going to pick a spot like right there and click it. I'm sorry, that's not the survival generator, it's survival constructor. So here, when you hit F and open up the inventory, you can see you've got plenty of space in here to store stuff. And I'm going to put most of this stuff in here. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier with shift clicking. Much, much easier if I just throw all this stuff in here like this. I'm going to throw all of this stuff in here. I'm not going to preview the pack, work light. Okay, O2 bottles. Going to keep the oxygen generator. Put the core in there. We're going to use this as our storage as well for now. Now, if I decided I didn't want that, I can pick this up by left shift and F. 
and then it's going to drop all that items on the ground. You can do that, pick everything up at once, and then place it back down again. That's kind of silly right now, but that is helpful if you need to move something later on. You don't have to take everything out of it one at a time. You can just place it down again, and then we're going to come back in here and do the exact same thing. So now you can see we've added crafting materials. That's the next thing, and they want us to craft a few fuel packs. So in order to do that, let's talk about crafting for just a minute. These tabs at the top kind of have categories of your gear, and you can also filter things. You can say, show me everything, or just show me things for bases. And if you do that, you're going to see a lot fewer blocks, or just show me things for capital ships, or just small vessels, or just hovercraft. And you'll see that if they have all the colors, of course, they're going to show up in all of those tabs. If you hover over and pause for a minute, you'll see tooltips for food and medical. And so, for example, we can cook a salami by clicking it if we have raw meat in our inventory. Now, right now, nothing's going to happen because we haven't turned the constructor on. This is not necessarily intuitive. Most people don't realize you have to do that. So turn that on and you'll see a little progress bar comes up and shows you that you're crafting something. Now, I will say in multiplayer, that bar does not work. It, does, it doesn't show you anything at all. It just crafts. That's okay, it's a known bug. This game is still in early access, but it's pretty far along for that. So they also want us to craft some fuel templates. I'm not gonna get too far into how to set up a base, but if you follow this along, you'll be able to see things like fuel packs, and it says on the right-hand side that it needs 10 Promethean pellets. You click that, you're gonna have one of those no problem at all. And then the other thing that's really nice, this is relatively new as well, is the motorbike template. So you drop this in here somewhere, and you can come over to the, what is this tab, devices, and you can make a motorbike out of a motorbike construction kit. You don't have to make all the individual pieces first. So let's do that. Okay, there we go. When that's done, you can put it on your hotbar and you'll see, you can place it anywhere you want in the world. Click down to, to actually drop it and F to enter the motorbike. So you're gonna use F to interact with all sorts of things and then you just drive around, forward, backward, left, right. It has a, a light on it, which is nice and it's much faster than walking to get around, which is very, very helpful. If you run into something, it's not going to do any damage to it, it's just going to stop you. And you can also reverse when you get stuck. If you get really and truly stuck, you can always just get off of the bike and pick it up again. And things don't weigh anything in Imperium as far as I can tell, so you can just carry as much as you've got inventory space for. You are going to want to brake and stop, and then jump off again. If you let this go into the water, it's going to have momentum and go down to the bottom of the lake. It's going to be kind of a pain to get back. But you can see if we left shift and F, we'll pick it back up. But you can leave this out in the world, it's perfectly fine. I'm going to leave it right here in our parking hole. And there you go. Okay, the other things in our tab menu, getting back to this, are blueprints and marketplace. Um, suicide does exactly what you think it does. I'm not going to talk anymore about that, but if you get stuck somewhere, you can do that. Blueprints. You can see things that you've downloaded from the workshop with this wrench here, and you can download different blueprints for different vehicles. If you are like wanting something that somebody else has built, a lot of them have pretty high unlock levels. And then you can also see some stuff that comes for free in the game. So this is a wooden basic starter. And you can see you need to be level 3 for that, it's a size 1, and you can see everything you need to put into this in order to make that base. So you need wood planks, cobalt, copper, iron, silicon, and growing plots. And you've got everything here starting out of your skate pot except the wood. So if you want a nice little wooden home, you could certainly go around, chop down wood until you had 760 wood planks, and then build one of those. Now this says it takes 12 minutes and 29 seconds to produce, and what's going to happen is you're going to click spawn, and then it will give you an option down here to load all those components from your inventory, you put all those components in there, and I, then you can click, I want to start, and it'll take 12 minutes. You can run around. It's going to make this in your inventory while you're doing other things, or even if you're offline. Some of them can take hours to craft from blueprints. But when you're done, you'll actually get a placeable base, and you get a big bounding box, kind of like what we saw when we were placing this constructor originally. You'll be able to find a place, make it fairly level, and plop that down. Now, a couple of important things if you're placing a base, you can always drill out the material that's in it. So if you place it partially in the ground, you got some sand sticking through your floor, you can drill out all that sand, it will not hurt your base a bit. You have to use something else, a remove tool to actually destroy the base objects. Um, or if you're in a PVP server you can uh, area or planet, you can shoot that. The other things that are important to note is if you have a base, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in a few minutes, you may need to power them and rename them. In order to do that, you're gonna come hit escape and you've got some options up here. This little control panel or remote device, that's a very helpful thing. If you're standing on a base or vehicle, you can see all the st uh, statistics about it. You can access all the inventories from the base or vehicle that you're standing in or on. You can power it, you can rename it, you can set the faction. That's really, really helpful. You can also hit P if you're standing on a base or a vehicle to do that as well. Okay, so now that we've got our survival crafter, we've talked about all the inventory and how that stuff works. The next thing we wanna do is start to follow these quests and it's gonna say place an oxygen generator. Now you don't really need this on Aqua because you have plenty of oxygen, but if you want to go diving later on, you're going to need to make more oxygen bottles. 
So right down here, you can see this blue bounding box and the oxygen, oxygen generator needs to be in water. And you can see that if you mouse over it, must be deployed in water. And if I try to put it up here, you're gonna see that it's in red. So it's gonna come down here and you can hit home and end keys to rotate this. So we're gonna drop that right there in the water and then you need to give it some items. So we're gonna put just one fuel pack in there and you can see it doesn't show up in the first slot. It uses it right away. But their operational time, we got 24 minutes of operation time, and every two minutes we're going to get an oxygen bottle. You see the source quality is 80%. That's only going to matter later on when we get different kinds of things where we're trying to generate um, water from snow and that sort of thing. It's going to matter a little bit. But for now, that's going to go on its own, and every two minutes we're going to get an oxygen bottle. And we don't have to come back and check on that until we need the oxygen. The next thing we want to do is find some edible plants and some medical plants. And there's a lot of these out in the world. So here we go, cobra leaves. That's nothing. These uh, aqua berries, there's some edible plants. And you can eat those directly, hence the name edible plants. Just put them on your inventory here, and then of course, click that button and you'll eat those berries. But for now, what I'm gonna do is you guys get the idea of harvesting. Let's go back to our PDA, and we're gonna say pick up plants, and we're gonna check the medical plants box. Okay, next is consume an item. I kinda showed you how to do that already. But we're gonna go ahead and eat another berry. There we go. Now we need to kill and loot an animal. These are herbivores, believe it or not, and they're going to run away if you attack them. So even if I shoot the big ones or the little ones, they're all going to run away. So let's come over here, and I'm going to be a real mean person. I'm going to shoot one of the babies because I don't want to use a lot of ammo. Hi, baby animals. We're going to shoot at these. And now we're losing our... We've got to reload here. Oh, no, I can't go up that same hill that they can. All right, so if we had managed to kill one, we'd get credit for that. But it looks like one of the parents got separated and is stuck down by the water. So, looks like it doesn't want to go in the water. We're going to reload again. Seems to be stuck down there. I don't know if we can actually hit it through the water or not. That's a good question. Doesn't look like we're having a whole lot of success here. But I don't know if it's, I don't think it's killed because we've got a credit for killing it already. Let's come down here. We're going to put our helmet on. Looks like you can, in fact, use your gun underwater. And these things go nuts when they're underwater because they're not supposed to be down here. And they take a lot of punishment, the big ones. There we go. Now we successfully killed an animal. So that's a lizard mule leader. And you can see we get a bunch more meat off of that than we did off of the slime. And now we can come back over here and we can cook the steak or salami. Just like we did before, we're gonna go to the food tab. We're gonna click salami one, two, three, four, five times, and it's gonna cook all that stuff up. The next quest is crafting the assault rifle and ammo. Now I'm not gonna keep going on all that. You guys can follow these quests. The next thing you're probably gonna to wanna to know is how to build a base. And you wanna do that before you run out of sunlight. We got about a minute, is that a minute? Or yeah, I think that's about a minute left. So we need to make a base starter. And we have this core here and this core can be used to make a base starter, a hover vehicle starter, um, a floating vehicle starter, all sorts of things like that. But for now what we wanna do is click base starter. And that doesn't take very long. If you need to make more cores, you can. Cores are kind of expensive, but for now, base starter. And once that's done, the other thing you're gonna to wanna to make is some blocks. You're gonna need some steel blocks of some kind, and you're gonna need a few other things. In order to make some of these components, you're actually gonna to have to make other components first. So in order to make steel blocks, you see on the right-hand side, I need two steel plates. And then these components, if I come over here, and I go to wherever it is, steel plates, that needs five iron ingots, and it makes 10 of them. So I'm gonna do this and it's gonna make one of those that's gonna turn into 10 steel plates. Then I can make five steel blocks out of that. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, in order to place our base, we're gonna to wanna to find some place nice and flat and level. So we're gonna go uphill a little bit. And that looks like a good spot right there. Now you can see it clears out some grass around it, which is very, very helpful. Placing these blocks, you just kinda of have to be next to them. But here's the really cool thing about Empyrean. If I press F5, I get a building drone. And actually using this, I can fly around and build stuff and destroy stuff, I can kinda of turn. And I can place right here one of these. Then I can come over this way and maybe I can click and drag across this way a little bit. And then maybe I wanna come over to the other side again, turn around here and build one more right there. Okay, so that's gonna give us a little L shape with our base. And then once we have our generator, that's two blocks wide and our fuel tank is one, we've got a little bit of a platform. We can stick our constructor on the top of that and we've got, we're ready to go. I can press F5 again to get out of this and then I can jump right on top of it. Now you see it says core player faction. If I hit P or click that remote button from before, you can see what things are missing to make this an official base. And you can also rename this. So I'm gonna call it home base. I'm gonna to check to make this my home. So if I die, I can respawn if I have uh, my home set. 
and if you have a clone chamber you can respawn there even if it's not your home. You can change the faction here from private, public, or any faction you're a member of. So let's set this for all the block farmers even though it's a single player world. And if I try to hit power, it's not going to work right now because I don't have that generator and fuel tank. Now the important thing to note, power is required in order to make this base function. Any devices on it need to be powered in order to happen. Power requires a generator and a fuel tank, and as soon as you have a powered base, every so often drones will come by and attack it, unless you've turned that feature off. So it's very important that if you're going to have a powered base, you also invest in some turrets because they will automatically target incoming drones. And make sure that if you're single player, when you go offline, the world is done. But on multiplayer servers, you really do need to put a bunch of bullets and things in there to keep them from destroying your base while you're not online, because they will attack when nobody's on. All right, so now we've got a few things that we can add to our base to finish it up. So we're going to go ahead and put our fuel tank right there. We're going to put our generator right over here, if we can get it to line up. So we're going to do this. We're going to hit end, drop the generator right there. We need to put some fuel in our fuel tank, so we're just going to shift click that and put it full of promethium. And then we're going to go ahead and put our large constructor, if we can get up here, right on top of that. Now again, this is exactly why the drone is really helpful, because it's hard for me to see that. But if I hit F5, I can fly up in the air, and I can hit N so I can put the control panel facing in somewhere that I like, and click my generator, my constructor rather. So now we have the minimum for getting a constructor base up and running. If we hit Y, we'll power it all on. And then we can use this constructor as well. This one's faster, and the very nice thing, instead of having to make the steel plates and then the steel blocks, this will make all the intermediate components for you when you click something. So if we come back over here, we're just going to pick this up, pick all those things up, and run right back over here and drop it all in our constructor. So let's, there's drones coming to attack our base already. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is why you don't generally want to power this up until you're ready to go. Um, there's some more salami to stack that up. There we go. And let's go ahead and look at, do we have any turrets? We don't. So let's hit our tech tree. Now that warning means that drones are coming in and they give you like a good 10 minutes or so, I think. Uh, so it doesn't take too long. Where's our cannon turret? Right there, unlock. All right, and now let's make our cannon turret. There it is. We're going to click that and you can see it's going to queue up everything it needs to make the cannon turret, which is fantastic. We're also going to need some 30 millimeter bullets, so we're just going to click about 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 of those. And if you shift click, you'll make 10 at a time. Now this makes 25 each, so that's actually 2,500. If I don't want that many, I can come back down. And 25 times 5 is plenty right now. 25 times 50, actually. So let's not even do that. Let's just do 10. That's going to be 250 rounds. It's going to be just fine for the short term. Um, right now, it's going to be silly because we're going to stick it hanging off the edge just because that's what we're going to have to do. There's not enough base space left for us to do this and have it kind of sitting on. I don't think I can put it. Oh, I can put it on top of there. Okay, we're going to stick it right on top of our constructor. It's silly, but it doesn't matter. What the important thing is, is that this is going to help us defend. But in order to put ammo in that, we also need an ammo crate. And a minigun drone is going to come in before we can get that done. So let's come out here and try to take the minigun drone out with our pistol. You can see he's already shooting at us from there. He's primarily interested in our base. There we go. Now we got his attention. There we go. And they're not too bad. The first couple of these are not bad at all. The nice thing is when you kill these minigun drones, you can loot them. And you can see they give you all sorts of components and some more ammo. So it's also a good idea to go hunting these drones anyway. So you get components for much easier. All right, so we've got a bunch of ammo. We need to make that ammo box. Cargo box. Small ammo box. There we go. So let's unlock the cargo box and the small ammo box. The cargo box is exactly what you think it is. It's basically a chest for storage. But here, let's go to ammo, and it's in one of these things. Cargo box and ammo box. Let's do one of each. And you'll see it makes all these components that it needs. Well, let's go ahead and throw some more components at it so it doesn't have to do that for the other thing. There we go, small ammo box is being crafted. And these can also be placed out here next to your base. So I'm gonna cover up my generator a little bit. Once we have that, we can actually take the bullets out of here and put them right back into this thing. And now our turret is powered and ready to go. So there's a couple of ways we can get into that one. We can try to jump up here and click it. That works just fine. You can reload and you can drive this around, kind of steer it, fire, whatever you want to do. It works pretty well. Or you can also leave it alone and let it auto target. Now, if we hit P for our control panel, we can see the cannon turret and you can see what things it's attacking. Right now it's going to attack other faction players. We don't really care because it's a single player, any aliens, any predators. We're not going to have it attack prey because that silly is just going to run away. Now as long as our base is powered, you can see that that's going to work just fine. 
and it looks like our base name got reset so we're going to set home base again now that it's powered and close that up so that's really all you need to do now you've got a, a base that's powered it would be nice to have some lights as well that's probably the other thing you're going to want to do so let's look at light and we're going to craft one of these for the time being it's going to take a little glass and a couple of metal components which we already have and as long as your base has power this light's going to work and it's going to make it really easy to find at night so we're just going to slap that right there boom big old light our cargo box is going to come over here and put that right next to our ammo box and here's where we can put all the stuff that we don't need right now like antidotes and o2 bottles and emergency rations extra charges that way if we die we don't have to go back and get that stuff and that's basically it you've got a stupid looking but very functional starting base you've got your turret up you've got a spawn point you've got your crafter you're making oxygen you got your motorcycle you're good to go from here on out uh, the sky is not the limit you can actually go into space and go to other planets so have fun enjoy and thanks for watching if you did like this video please be sure to hit that like button if you really enjoyed it then make sure to subscribe and as always i've been brick waffle thank you for watching Thank you.